What's going on, Imperials? It's Emperor Cubone here. Since the first generation, Pokemon has provided us with the idea of reviving ancient creatures from our past. This was always a brilliant concept, and once they kept adding to the roster, it only stretched our imagination. Resurrecting these long-lost beasts is quite an impressive feat of science, and one can't help but wonder if they got everything just right. These fossils have been around for thousands of years, which is a long time for their genetic material to degrade. So who's to say if that's exactly how they used to be? In fact, it's very likely that these versions are altered from their original forms. Ever notice how every single one of the fossils has the rock typing? You might say, well, yeah, of course they do, because they come from rocks. They do now but they didn't always. So it seems plausible that the fossils are all rock types due to imperfections in the resurrection process. So, if this shared typing was forced onto them, did they used to have something else? It's possible that the rock typing took the place of another that they used to have. So, which types did they force out? Starting in Generation 1, we have the water type Kabuto family, and, of course, the great Lord Helix himself. At first glance, I can only assume that Kabuto and Kabutops would be bug types back in the day. But honestly, I could see that for Ammonite and Amistar too. Their hard shells give off a certain snail vibe. So they could be related and both have been water bug types. Generation 1 also had the distinction of having another fossil outside the pair, that being Aerodactyl. This flying type is some sort of cross between a Pteranodon and a standard carnivore. So, I think it's likely that Aerodactyl was a flying and dragon type. It makes sense given its appearance and even its move pool. And if it was in that order, I could even see it being related to the only other dual type with a primary flying typing being Noivern. Maybe Lance knew something that we didn't, because he seemed more than willing to include this prehistoric predator in his draconian horde. Since the Johto region is too cool for fossils, we'll move on to Hoenn. I've always really liked the first pair of Anorith and Armaldo. These ones are already bug type, and even though they're said to have some connection with the water, that's not what I'm going with. A heavy emphasis for these Pokemon is their impressive armor. These protective plates are said to be nigh impenetrable, so I think it's possible that they were, in fact, at one time, bug and steel types. The other pair is even more interesting. Lilip and Cradilly are grass types, but their Pokedex entries talk about it being an underwater creature as well. They really seemed to like the aquatic ones in these early fossils. This is further supported by it being classified as the Barnacle Pokémon. So, making this an ancient grass-water type sounds like a fitting and more unique combination. The Sinnoh fossils could be a little trickier, simply due to the fact that Cranidos and Rampardos are pure rock types. Up to this point, we've been assuming that rock replaces one of the Pokémon's pre-existing types, and it's not able to override them both. However, if a Pokémon was naturally a single type, then rock simply would have been added on to the type that they already had through the fossilization and revival process. So it may be that in this one case, the Pokémon in question was already a pure rock type before the resurrection, which would be in line with the descriptions of their rock-hard skulls. However, our friends Shieldon and Bastiodon are a different story. Obviously, these two are steel types through and through, but were they always rock types like their friends? I'm not so sure that they would be. I could realistically see these two being ground types, considering their environment. It also may be possible that these massive reptiles were once dragon types. It might seem a little less likely, and if we're going with that logic, any big dinosaur-looking Pokémon would have to be a dragon type. So we'll stick with the ground typing for now. Next is the fossil pairing from Unova. We'll start with the bird, because it might be a little easier. The flying type would remain, obviously, 
but what else would it be? Could it have been a pure flying type? Don't be ridiculous, Game Freak is clearly scared of the flying type being on its own. It may seem like the boring answer, but I feel like it was probably just a normal and flying type. So behold, the first ever regional bird. That is its species name after all, being the first bird Pokemon. Next is the cute turtle Pokemon. Tortuga and Caracosta are water types, living deep in the ocean. But is that all? I could see these creatures getting away with a pure water typing. Because of their hard shells, maybe they were rock types all along. However, I could also see them as possibly being dark types. Caracosta especially has an edge on him. Somehow these ones seem a bit more difficult to nail down, but factoring in everything like move pools and personality, I think these sea turtles could pull the dark typing off. Next would have to be my absolute favorite pair of fossils found in the Kalos region. First is the cute little Amara. The ice type makes sense as these Aurora Borachiosaurus Pokemon are right at home in the cold. So they could be pure ice types, but if they were to be given another one, I think it could be possible that they were once psychic types. On top of being able to learn a number of psychic type moves, these gentle giants have significant interaction with light, specifically in regards to their emotional ties to it. And the psychic type does seem to have a corner in the photon department. And finally is my all-time favorite fossil, Tyrantrum. The king of the ancient Pokemon world is already a giant dragon, so what more could you want? Well, that question plagued me quite a bit, because to me, nothing else really fits. They're certainly not fighting types or anything. Some people have said that they could maybe be dark types, but I don't see it. Just because they're ferocious doesn't mean they're evil. So I think it's most likely that they were pure dragon types back in their prime, and only had the rock types grafted on later. Since Alola didn't have any new fossils discovered either, until Gen 8 comes out, these are the only ones we have. So, accepting the premise that not every fossil Pokémon was originally a rock type, I believe these combinations to be among the most plausible. And what's more is that I came up with this idea all by myself. Uh, okay, after a little bit of research on my computer, apparently numerous other people have had similar ideas in the past, but that alone should only be further evidence of proof that multiple people can separately come to identical conclusions given the same facts. So it seems almost like a foregone conclusion that most fossil Pokémon were not originally rock types. So, what do you think about the original fossil Pokémon? Let me know down in the comments! Also be sure to leave a like, share this video, and subscribe so that you too can become an Imperial today! And we'll see you around next time!